Good evening. Welcome to the Hayward Family Ministry as we look at Isaiah chapter 49. And I just want to thank the Lord again. We've been away for illness. I've been away in the hospital. And I've got my I got my King James Schofield Bible, my note Bible, my family Bible, all my notes, and I'm able to read it again. With all the antibiotics I've been on, the words have been blurry. I'm sitting here again. I'm able to mark the word, read the word, see my notes. Though my eyes are getting aged, I look at my notes and they're they're twice as small as when I used to write them. So Isaiah 49 is an interesting chapter because Isaiah is writing it. But Isaiah is speaking for somebody important. Isaiah is going to speak, and yet he's speaking for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to throw it out there again. I mean, oh, you know, people in the Old Testament look forward to Calvary. I'm going to show you the second advent. I'm going to show you the second advent. I'm going to show you the millennium. And then I'm going to show you the first advent. It's not in order. Listen, Isaiah 49.1, that is the only time that word shows up in the King James Bible. Listen, nowhere else, O Isles, there's some say coasts, some say little islands, some say Gentile. There's a lot to that, but Isles, listen unto me. Isaiah is writing, but he's speaking for Jesus. And hearken ye people. Now, he's not just speaking for the children of Israel. He's speaking to all the people. The Bible is written for all people. The Bible is written for the Jewish, Hebrews. The Bible is written for Gentiles. The Bible is written for Christians. you got to find out what the context is. From far. The Lord has called me, Isaiah, speaking of Jesus Christ, from the womb. And it could be true, but we're going to see later on that it can't be Isaiah. And that womb of Jesus Christ would be Mary's womb. The virgin birth. And this calling is the same calling that you find in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Jeremiah and Jesus Christ and Isaiah have a particular calling of God from the womb. So how do you say there, there's no life in the womb? From the bowels of my mother. And how do you know that's Jesus Christ? What was the constant reference Jesus used for Mary, mother? Who is my mother? John, behold thy mother, mother. I don't think he ever called her Mary, or he called her woman. Have he made mention of my name? Well, what's uh, Isaiah? Okay. But there's a greater name. There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. That's the name of Jesus Christ. Second Advent. For he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. True for Isaiah. But second advent, Revelation chapter 19, out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. Scripture with scripture, reference with reference. In the shadow of his hand has he hid me, God and Jesus, has made me a polished shaft. And it was one of the, the arm, armaments of arrows and all that, was they shined their, their weaponry. They shined their armor. In this quiver, that's where he kept the arrows, as he hid me. So Jesus Christ is like an arrow of God, shined up, ready for a purpose. Second Advent, verse 3, he said unto me, Thou art my servant, Gospel of Mark. Mark is the servant, Jesus Christ the servant. O Israel! Now we turn to Israel, in whom I will be glorified. 
They're not being God is not being glorified in Israel today. I uh, in the in the life of Isaiah, Israel is not giving God the glorification. In the life of Jeremiah, Israel's gone. It's only Judah. Then I said, I have labored in vain. And some will look at the, the life of Jesus Christ. Oh, well, what's the purpose of the cross and death and burial and resurrection? Not everybody gets saved. Well, you know, if you look at his sin, they die just like the unsaved people do. Well, what's the value? Eternal life. Those that rejected Jesus Christ go off in the lake of fire that burns forever. Those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are, are saved and go off to New Jerusalem and earn rewards and crowns and inheritance. It's not vain. And that vein would be the, the, the Ecclesiastes, you know, vanities, vanities, as the viewpoint of the worldly standards. Yeah, the wicked survive, the wicked do great, and, and, the, and, and the, the rich and all that. But that's this time. That's not the eternal time. I have spent, spent my strength for naught. In vain... That's the vain, I mean, that's the, the written of Ecclesiastes. The earthly, worldly view. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord. That's the second advent. Not the first advent. The second, and my work is with God. Everything that Jesus Christ did was for the work and the honor and the glory of the Father. They were one. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb. True Isaiah, true Jeremiah, and true with Jesus Christ. Gabriel said that, Mary says, listen, I haven't been with a man. He said, the Holy Spirit, I believe it is, shall come upon thee. And that holy thing, scripture with scripture, to bring Jacob again to him. Now, in Matthew 19, Jesus said, I come to seek that which is lost. Well, who's lost? The Gentiles? Uh, 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 uh. He came unto his own, his own received him not. He came for the nation of Israel. He came of the family of Judah, of the Israelites, of the Jewish people, a Hebrew. Never mind the, 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 the crappy story, the greatest story ever told. No, no, Jesus is Jewish. He came to the nation of Israel. He fulfilled the law, what Israel couldn't do. Though Israel be not gathered, and they weren't gathered when he came, they were more scattered. When Paul and, and, and those went out in the book of Acts, do you realize they found synagogues all over Europe, the known Europe? Well, what's the synagogue? Where the Jewish people met. Acts chapter 2 is, is, is a table of contents of Jewish men who were all over the known world. And yet shall I be glor glorious in the eyes of the Lord. And Jesus is. And my God shall be my strength. So that would be Isaiah. And he said, you're going back and forth, back and forth. It is a light thing that thou shouldst be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Now, that's not Isaiah. There is one individual raised up to gather the glorious vacation of the Father by a group of people called the Jews, Jesus Christ, and to restore and preserve Israel. How do you say that God's all finished with Israel? The main purpose and the, 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 the life of Jesus Christ is came for the nation of Israel to preserve Israel. Well, God's all finished with Israel. No, he's not. As a nation, as a corporate group of people, they're put aside. But I've known plenty of Jews personally who have gotten saved. And there are many Jews who have rejected Jesus Christ. And there's a time called Jacob's Trouble. Not Tom's trouble. 
not George's trouble. Jacob, Israel. And then Jesus Christ is going to come. He's going to come for one group of people. Revelation chapter 12, Israel. And going to bring a group of people into the promised land and it's not Arabian. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. That's Jesus Christ. All right. We're in a period and age right now as a corporate body, a group of people called the Jews. Jesus Christ has been rejected. The Messiah has been rejected. Paul says, okay, you know what? Did the words of blood be upon yours, I'll go to the Gentiles. And yet Paul writes to us, my heart's desire is that the children of Israel would be saved. You know, Paul, against the Holy Spirit three times, went to a place that God said, don't go, Jerusalem, because he loved the Jews. And thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. What do you got for that one? For God so loved the world that he gave. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer, capital L of Israel, that's not Isaiah, and his Holy One, to whom, whom men despise. Men despise God, and men despise Jesus Christ. You can't put verse 7 on Isaiah. He's not the Redeemer. He's not the Holy One. That's only the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R. Cap that's Jehovah, Redeemer. That's Jesus Christ, the finished work on Calvary. Right, there's Calvary. But verse 2, we saw the second advent. To him whom the nations abhor it. God bless America when America hates Jesus Christ. How do you know? America is shutting the churches down. America don't want to hear the street preachers. America don't want people coming to their door with the gospel. America doesn't want the Bible to be preached. As with others, listen. You want a surefire way to, to, to be killed instantly? Get yourself a boat, an airplane, head over to North Korea, stand on the streets of North Korea, and preach the gospel. You'll be dead, if not tortured. Do it in China. Now, you may have a little leeway in China. Then you have North Korea. I don't know how Russia is today, but Russia used to be one of them areas. Just bring a Bible to Afghanistan, and you're in big trouble. Our U.S. military forces, the men and women that serve in our government, and thank you for serving our military, cannot bring their Bibles over to Afghanistan when they serve. Because the Muslims say, we don't want that book. Okay, well, if you don't want the book, we're not going to be over here. We ain't going to protect you. You, you. you protect yourselves with your nice, kindly, friendly religion. A peace. Oh. You know? To a servant of rulers, king shall see and arise. Pilate. Herod. I've known a personally, I've talked with missionaries in Africa where there have been leaders of African nations that have stood up for Jesus Christ, gotten saved. I don't think, of not a king, but a queen. I think of Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria said one day, you know, if, if Jesus Christ were to come right now, she looked for the rapture. If Jesus Christ would come right now, I will get off my throne, I will bow down, and I will give that throne to Jesus Christ. You want to try that in the Oval Office with Biden? You want to try that with the Oval Office with, with uh, Trump? You want to try that with the Oval Office Obama? I don't know about Bush. Mm -hmm. Bush would sell out for oil. You realize Paul 
in his letters. One of his letters says, he writes, I forget which one. He says, those of Caesar's household, or, or not me, of Caesar's household, of Caesar's. Paul in Rome is witnessing to the people, the family, or the workers under Caesar. And he's sitting there. Hey, I just want to tell you, the people of Caesar, they want to say, hi, how you doing? That's remarkable. That's remarkable. I don't know. Well, Isaiah did before kings of, of Israel. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful. That's, I, not, listen, we're no Christian, no child of God of Israel, no prophet of God was ever truly 100% faithful. Jeremiah says, I quit. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, not giving up. Jesus Christ was faithful, always, never unfaithful. And the Holy One of Israel, God, Jesus, and he shall choose thee, Israel. Oh, God's all finished with Israel. No, God said, hey, Jesus Christ is not even around yet. This is 712 B.C. And God said, hey, my son, my, the Messiah is coming for one group of people, Israel. Thus saith the Lord. In acceptable time, but God proved the time. I have heard thee. And in a day of salvation have I helped thee. What's the day of the salvation of the nation of Israel? The second advent. The salvation of what? <laughs> Against the Antichrist. You realize when Jesus Christ comes back, the Antichrist and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire and the devil is chained for a thousand years? And Israel is set free of the seven years? Have I helped thee and will preserve thee, Israel, and give thee for a covenant of the people, that new covenant. I'll give you a new heart and your iniquities and sins. I'll remember no more to establish the earth. <coughs> What's that? That's the reign of Jesus Christ on David's throne. Not Washington, D.C. Not the queen or kings of, of Europe. Not the Tsar of Russia. And the cause to inherit desolate heritage. The land is desolate today. There's places, I mean, it's just unfruitful. That thou mayest say to the prisoners, go forth, come out of jail. To them that are in darkness. Well, that could be Jesus, the first advent. Where he's the light, but in the tribulation, there's a period when Jesus Christ comes, the sun, the moon, and the stars are darkened. There is no light, artificial or natural. And then they look to the they look to the north, and here comes the I see the light. Show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be. In all high places. Right? You know what the high places of Isaiah's time is? They're worshiping false gods. You know what the high places are today? Is the space industry shooting the dragon. Man, if you don't know we're coming to the end time, we, we got a U.S. space program called the dragon. They just, they just sent up four astronauts or whatever they call them today. I'm waiting for the fifth one to come back. I wait when they open up that capsule. That capsule say, "Didn't we see four? I see five, and five will give you the handwriting on the wall." They shall not hunger nor thirst. Millennium. Where's the church age? You don't see it. 
Oh, you know, they saw Calvary. Did we see Second Advent? Don't we see Calvary? Don't we see Millennium? Oh, oh. Come on. If you pin Isaiah down and held a 45 to his forehead right now, Isaiah, tell me right now, you see Jesus Christ as you're writing Isaiah 49. Who? You want to pull the trigger? You better say you see Jesus in Calvary. What? What's a Jesus Christ? You know what Calvary and Jerusalem is to Isaiah right now when he looks to the temple? Oh, that's. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall they heat nor the sun smite them by day. You know, you heard that expression before? That's millennium. And the sun is going to be three or four times, I think seven times, brighter than it is. For he that has mercy on them, God has mercy on Israel, shall lead them. Uh, now, who's going to lead Israel? He's on a white horse with his army behind him, the church. And we pick him up to sell a Petra, probably, and we go along the king's highway. We're not talking about Joshua, though Joshua is the first prince. You want to know what, what the book of Joshua tells us? Joshua tells us, and Moses told us, how and way Israel's going to go. Even the springs of water shall he guide them. Jesus said, I am the water of life. Out of me shall flow bellies of living water. You see the, you see the references that, that, I, that Jesus quotes and pitches himself back to the Old Testament, Genesis to Malachi. And this is the same thing that Paul would sit down and say, listen. All right. Give me the Isaiah scroll 49. Now let me show you Jesus. Let me show you Jesus Christ. And then he would pull that the scroll of Isaiah chapter 53. This is what Paul would do because here is Jesus, and you can't find many Christians today that would even read the Old Testament. Never mind, don't even read the whole Bible. I will make all my mountains away. And my highway shall be exalted. That's Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4. That's what John the Baptist was supposed to do. John the Baptist was supposed to be Elijah. If Israel would have believed the Messiah, which they did, they rejected, and they rejected John the Baptist. Listen, Moses and Elijah are coming back. Behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north, and from the west, and these from the land of Sinem. Verse 13, millennium. Sing, O heaven. How's the heaven singing? The devil and his angels have been cast out of heaven. Chapter 12 of, yeah, chapter 12 of Revelation. Didn't you read Revelation 12? The devil's cast out and, and woe be to the earth because he knows that for a little time. And we heard, hallelujah! Glory to God! Michael kicked their butt! The accursed of the brother is cast down. The false prophet, the antichrist, are cast in the lake of fire. The devil's bound for a thousand years. Everybody rejoice because Jesus Christ is seated on the throne. Glory to God. Be joyful, O earth. Why? There's Jesus, your king. The curse has been removed off the earth. And break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord has comforted his people. His people is not the Catholics. His people are the Jews. And will have mercy upon his afflicted. Who, who, is, who has been afflicted for seven years? Who has been afflicted throughout all history, going all the way back to Abraham? But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. 1 Samuel 1, 19. Present tense. That's not going to be said in the millennium, but present tense, the Jews say, you know, 
How can you say sing and rejoice? God don't look upon us. God don't care about us no more. You're not doing right. Can a woman forget her suckling child? That she should have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee, Israel. I know a woman, oh, no, no mother can forget their child. And 2021, there are mothers and fathers. Fathers are already forsaken their children. Mothers are forsaken their children. I, I remember growing up, and I was married, Lisa, my wife, and this girl. And I remember when I was working for the newspaper, it would be stories about women would leave their, their babies in garbage cans. They would find their babies in dumpsters. And then I forget what, it, what year it was. I see it down here in Florida. And I know I was working for the newspaper because I read it in the newspaper. I, I, it was delivering at the time that there were device places. And back then it was a police department, a fire department, or hospitals. That if you didn't want your child no more, you could walk in those facilities, turn your child into authorities then. And there'd be no questions asked. Maybe, you know, principal questions, but, you know, the health of the child like that. There'll be no questions that you can drop off your child that you don't want. And I had a woman tell me, well, mothers will never forget their children. I think, I don't really know, there's a sign, but I think there's a donut place here in Daytona Beach. I think that sign means if, if you don't want your child, you can drop it off there, I think. I don't know what that sign means. I could be wrong. But. Uh, I like a large black. Hey, give me a frosted, and here, take my baby. You realize in Exodus chapter 1, that, that, that Amram's wife, Jochebed, was protecting her little boy? Oh, no, you ain't going to get him. I got imagine. I can imagine Miriam and Jochebed saying, that, hey, you know, we're going to let you, your brother go down, but, you know, if you can... I mean, Mary went and got the baby's mother, and today they're giving him away. Without natural affection, the Bible calls that. Behold, I have given raven thee upon the palms of my hand. Well, guess who that is? Is that Isaiah? What's the graven upon the palms of his hand? The nail prints. And there's one place, one of the prophets said, What are those prints and the nails in your hand? Where I was wounded in the house of my friend. Thomas said, you know, unless I poke my finger in that hole, I won't believe. And then Thomas came up with the greatest rebuke for Jehovah's Witnesses. My Lord, my God. And the Jehovah's Witnesses run away like their underwear is on fire. Oh, that's the Mormons in their underwear. Still, thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. Now Isaiah saw Babylon's coming. Nineveh's coming. Rome's coming. You know, it's so funny the Jews are saying in Jesus' time, we're under no bondage. Wait a minute. They had to get permission from Rome to crucify one man that's giving him a hard time and three times that man said hey I, I find no fault will you crucify him but we're under bondage no man will you crucify him listen listen Pilate we're gonna go we're gonna go tell Herod if you don't crucify this man you're under no bondage you're under bondage of Rome lift up the eyes round about and behold all these gather themselves together and come to thee. As I live, saith the Lord. That's an oath. That's God's by Jehovah me. That's God stepping the courtroom. Do you so 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 that? Yeah. Do you swear to tell the whole truth? Nothing but the truth. So help me me. That's God. Thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all as an ornament, and by them on thee as a bride doth 
from the pride to it? There's a church. There's a church. She's married to Jesus Christ. She comes back on her honeymoon. Uh, honey, where are you going to take us for our trip? We're going to go to Jerusalem. All right. Don't you want to go to the Holy Land? I will one day. I'll let Jesus take me. For thy waits and thy desolate places, the land of Israel, Palestine, and the land of thy destruction shall even now be too narrow by reason inhabitant. Since so many, listen, there, there, there's Jews over there, there's the PLO over there, there's Arabians over there, there's Catholics over there, there's foolish Christians over there, there right now they're, they're, they're Syria sending them missiles, and everyone's over there. And are they there for the name and the glorification of Jesus Christ? Not, not with the Catholics running the place around. Hey, it's a funny thing. I heard a preacher one day. Yeah, I went over to the Holy Land, and and this Arabian was telling us. Arabian was telling you the Bible facts. Really? I would have packed up, got back in the bus, got back in the airplane, went. I want my money back. That place ain't the Holy Land. It's a bunch of Catholics and Arabians running around. And they shall swallow thee up, shall be far away. Far away, where? In hell. When Jesus Christ comes, all that hated thee, the goats. Hi, depart from me. You didn't help them. You didn't take care of them. You didn't visit them. You didn't help them. You didn't heal them. You didn't give them food. Depart from me. The children which thou shalt have, after thou hast lost the other. <laughs> Lost, yeah. What are the lost children? The ones of the Jewish children have gone into hell. There are Jewish uh, people with men and women in hell today. But there's coming a group of J Jewish children. They'll be there with Jesus. Shall say again in thy ears, the place is too straight for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. That land will be theirs. The occupation of the Jews under Jesus Christ. And, you know, Jesus, this, this, this farm is a little short. All right, take the farm next to it. Thou shalt, then shalt thou say in thy heart, Who has begotten me thee? Seeing I have lost my children. Well, what are these children? And desolate and captive and moving and removing to and fro. That's the Jew presently. And who has brought these up in the millennium? Behold, I was left alone. These, where have they been? The, so, the world is going to be so populated with Israelites and Jewish and Hebrew. I mean, where did all these people come from? Blessings of God. Does not the law say if you finally, when you finally will take care of me, I won't have you, I won't have you barren. I won't bring the, 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 diseases, the diseases of Egypt upon you. I will bless the fruit of your cows. I will bless the fruit of your, your, your wife. I will bless your children. When the curse is removed off the earth, you know what that curse removed? There will be no pain in childbirth. The pain in childbirth came after the curse. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentile, that's a, that's the non-Jewish people, and set my standard to the people. And they shall bring thy sons and in their arm. All right, here's the Gentile children. And thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. Here comes the Gentiles, and they, they, they're carrying their children. With all the Jewish family and the king shall be thy nursing father that's kind of odd because fathers don't nurse and their queens thy nursing mothers 
and they shall bow down to thee, Jesus, and their faces toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. That's what the serpent's going to be doing and is doing. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Listen, the Gentiles are going to come and they're going to come and worship before Jesus Christ. And they're going to come and, hey, you're the Jews, you're the Hebrews, you're God's people. Tell us about God. Listen, that light upon the hill is not Christians. It's supposed to be the Jewish people. Jesus was speaking to Jewish people. That Ethiopian unit came to Jerusalem looking for God. Problem is, he had to meet God on the way going home. The Queen of Sheba came to Jerusalem looking to God. And she brought all the spice. Listen, you think those spice were just, I bet you she brought all that stuff for God. And the Jewish people. That, that Queen of Sheba is a representation of the Gentile nations coming to Jesus in Jerusalem, not Solomon, and bringing all they have to the glorification of God in Israel. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty and the lawful captive delivered? For thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. And I will contend, that's a fight, with him that contended with thee, the Jews. I will curse them that curse thee. Can you imagine, coming out of the tribulation period, go to hell. Well, why, God? You didn't help my people, you didn't take care of my people, you didn't feed my people, you didn't give no aid to my people, you didn't visit my people. You persecuted them, you, you, you deprived them. Get out of my sight. That's the same thing that, that God told, Jesus told Paul on the road to Damascus of Christians. I know they weren't called Christians yet, but I'm talking about people who believed in the Lord Jesus. Why persecute without me? And it's going to turn around at the end of the second advent going to the millennium. Jesus is going to turn to the nation, to the goat nation. Why did you persecute me? And there'll be no salvation like it was for Paul. And then the light will be turned off. It'll be in darkness and hell. It's a reversal of what Paul. And when they see, when they throw the three Hebrew uh, men into the fiery furnace, and we see four loose and one like the Son of God, one day they're going to they're, they're be the temple servant, and the high priest goes walking in there, hey, we send them in. Didn't we send one man in there? Yeah, only one man's going in that place. I see two. And one's wearing a rosary. I mean, no, oh, sorry. <laughs> but let's say, Lord, even the captives of the mind shall be taken away. The prey of the terrible shall be delivered. I will contend with him that contended with. You imagine contending with God. And I will save thy children, Israel. I will feed them that are oppressed thee with their own flesh. That's the goats. And they shall be drunken with their own blood. The sword being trampled by the horse. The army that follow. As with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I am the Lord, thy Savior, capital S, that is Jesus. How are you going to know at that point that here is Jesus? Man, he's the one, the horse, he's the one that said, King of kings, Lord of lords. He's the one with the banner of, of, of God. He's the one with the sword that comes out of his mouth, and he's got the church following him. That's Jesus. That other horse guy, the, you know, the white horse, he came with a crown. He came with a bow with no arrow. Jesus Christ comes with many crowns, and he comes with a sword. And his eyes are aflame as fire. And he practiced judgment upon his children, Israel, God's children, upon those that protected Israel, the sheep, and those that were against Israel, 
the goats, and the devil, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. And when Jesus Christ sits upon the throne of David, Gabriel will be praised. You realize right now Gabriel is wrong? Right now. He told Mary, didn't he say, Mary, your son is going to see on the, on the throne of David. Has it happened yet? No. I mean, he, he had that one day when Jesus, glorification of, of all the heaven, all he sits on David's. He imagine Gabriel sitting there up with Michael Gudger. <laughs> I told Mary's gonna happen. <laughs> Look at that. And you realize at that moment, all the angels in heaven, God's angels, are gonna finally understand. They don't understand right now. Angels don't understand a person believing on the blood of the Lord Jesus. They don't know what blood is. But when they see Jesus Christ put upon the throne of the children of Israel, ah, that's it. That's the reason why. And that Redeemer, capital R, that's Jesus, the mighty one of Jacob. That's, that's a wonderful great thing about Jesus. Uh, I don't like to read the Old Testament. Sorry for you.